Hi, uh, I'm Ryan Lang, and welcome to The Art of Color and Light from CGMA. Um, so this class is focused around, you know, the, the art of color and light, um, how light interacts with color, um, value structures, and we're going we're gonna to use all these things to evoke emotions, which is basically what our job as concept artists, um, at, at the very basic level, we want people to look at an image and say, wow, that's cool. Or we want people to look at an image and think that's really sad or super happy. But whatever it is, we're always trying to evoke an emotion out of our audience. So over the course of the next eight weeks, um, it's kind of what we're gonna be learning how to do um, through the use of uh, color and light. Now there's, there's other elements that uh, influence people's uh, perception of things and, and emotions towards an image and, and uh, including uh, shape language, um, music. Um, I mean, there's a whole bunch of other cues, but we'll mainly center around uh, color and light and values that uh, come from that. So uh, I guess a good way to start off is just to kind of look at uh, some of my work and uh, just give you a quick introduction of myself. So here's uh, here's some work I've done, uh, some characters from a, a book uh, called um, Baltimore, Steadfast Tin Soldier and the Vampire. Uh, it was just kind of going after a uh, really cartoony, like a cartoon modern kind of look. Um, you know, I think, uh, I think it's important to experiment with different looks. Uh, this is from my trainee work, or my work as a trainee, um, Hansel and Gretel. Uh, this was just kind of what we call a, like a hero pose or a hero painting. Um, here's a Gretel. Don't know why I drew a bucket, but or painted a bucket, but there it is. I guess I didn't want to paint her other leg or something. I don't know. I cheated in some way. I know it. Um, and this was the witch from that story, or uh, at least my interpretation. Um, oops. Uh, here's some moments. Um, you know, speaking of uh, evoking emotion um, from our audience, uh, these paintings, uh, these next couple of paintings, were done specifically with that in mind. Uh, I wanted to have a separation of environments, and I wanted a certain feeling to go with those. So. You know, this is uh, this is the beginning of the story, and uh, you know, this is when Hansel and Gretel are lost in the in the woods, and it's uh, you know, this feels decidedly scarier than this. So it's you know, you get a different emotional impact from the image, and then as the story goes, they walk through the forest, then they get to uh, the witch's house, which is you know made of candy, and it's just basically everything a little kid wants. And so, you know, I tried to convey that with the colors here, but then maybe a little bit of ominous uh, feeling over on this side, just kind of, you know, hinting at the possible danger in there, showing a contrast again between the forest and this seemingly happy spot. Uh, this is some work from Wreck-It Ralph, uh, Game Central Station. Um, this was a development piece to kind of just uh, get across the finer details of the interior. I think they, they always knew they wanted it to be the inside of a power strip, but you know, what does that look like? And obviously a power strip doesn't have all these little details in it. It has probably these plugs, but uh, you know, I had to kind of go in there and, and give it a lighting scheme reminiscent of um, uh, Grand Central Station, uh, some of those old photos. And, and that'll happen sometimes, you know, people will say, well, we want this type of feeling. So you, you're, you basically have to analyze an image and uh, kind of take what you can from it and implement it into your image. Another moment, uh, this was a, a, for a, I think it was supposed to be a, a first look, like an introduction, like it would be the first image released to the public, but they went with a 3D render, which was way better. <laughs> um, Again, this is, uh, this is in Game Central Station um, and just some of the characters and, and the theme for this world was, you know, it's, it's all the video games tether, video game characters tether to the real world. So it has a little bit more realistic lighting um, 
really kind of muted going after the uh, you know the Grand Central Station feel that, that bustling interior feel Hero's Duty was uh, one of the other worlds uh, in Wreck-It Ralph and you know this is a first person shooter it's supposed to be dark and grungy with a lot of contrast you know, muted colors so this was a development piece for that we had been working on this world but this was one of the first images where we kind of just sat down and put everything together uh, an early Hero's Duty piece just never thought I'd be painting stuff like that at Disney um, another early piece more Hero's Duty uh, you can see how much the, the color shifted we got rid of all the warm colors and uh, went for a, a cooler palette um, to really drive home the difference between Hero's Duty and uh, what I'll show in a second, Sugar Rush more Hero's Duty um, some tower ideas You'll notice that it's pretty muted. I mean, it's so, uh, and when I say muted, I mean the colors aren't strong. Uh, they aren't intense. They're more grayish. But then there's punches of color, like this green. And um, it's something we'll go over in a little bit. Um, another version of the tower. And this was an early development piece for Sugar Rush. So, you know, you get a you get a certain emotion here, and a certain emotion here, and they're hopefully very different. Um, it's an early uh, candy cane forest piece. Another early piece. And, and part of your job as a, as a visual development or concept artist, uh, you know, people, they say, well, we want this candy world. What does it look like? And you sit down and say, hmm, I don't know. Let me figure it out. So, and part of figuring that out, I mean, along with the shape language is the color and and how light is interacting. More Sugar Rush. Uh, early moment of Sugar Rush when uh, Ralph first crash lands. And uh, another, uh, this was a, a moment where uh, the, the race starts. Uh, this was uh, one of the couple of map paintings that I did, um, given really basic gray geometry, no textures, and uh, this next one, everything green was actually 3D and everything else is uh, painted. This was uh, another uh, task that I uh, kind of started getting into, which was I, I would do these paintings of these carts, uh, these uh, candy racer carts for Sugar Rush, and I really started getting into um, uh, suggesting the materials so and, and how light was interacting with those materials. Which is a, a again, it's another topic that we'll go over later in the class. Um, just kind of uh, trying to get a different feeling of a different material. Another material study. This was for the interior of the volcano, and uh, we wanted it to you know be be chocolate. I don't think we ended up going with anything like this. They felt it was too melty, and I agree. Um, but uh, you know, we really wanted to just kind of get across that this is chocolate. And how do you do that? And so I really had to look at a lot of reference of chocolate and, you know, open up candy bars and see how, you know, peanut brittle and nougat and, you know, fudge and stuff worked. And yeah, I think I gained a couple pounds during this movie. <laughs> um, this was a crash site and it was just kind of, you know, looking at more material indication. Um, uh, this started off as a drawing uh, by another artist and I just went in and you know kind of did a look pass um, just a painted pass uh, so that they knew uh, modeling and texturing or uh, we call it look development uh, so they knew what to kind of what materials to actually make this thing some uh, let me shrink this down just a little these are small paintings that I uh, that I do on my iPad sometimes or slate um, just kind of working on observational skills and you know trying to figure out what's happening with light and color and they're fun little studies and I super duper encourage people you know if you have the means uh, it doesn't have to be digital it can be traditional it doesn't even have to be color you can just use black and white but observing from nature is you know is 
it's key. It, it, it helps inform your decisions when you're working on completely made up stuff. Uh, get this just a little bigger. Let's do this. Uh, these were just a series of uh, paintings I did on uh, not an iPad, but a whoops, on a slate. Um, and so these are a, a series of images that I uh, painted on a slate using Photoshop, and just kind of exploring different. Uh, lighting scenarios and how they affect color. Uh, if you can believe it, this mountain range right here, this painting is literally this mountain range but just to the side here and it was just a different time of day so you can see kind of the the extremes of what happens to a color depending on the light and the, the atmosphere. Um, night painting, this was this was challenging, this was a you know it's a really low-key painting with a with a little bit of high high contrast, a little light accent. And uh, yeah, so I think that's about it for my little introduction. Um, so uh, let's move on to some, uh, well basically what we're gonna be doing for the next eight weeks, you know. I'll just kind of give you a, a quick rundown of uh, what's gonna happen. So, we're gonna start today. I'll just kind of give like you know, I'll give you the overview, and we'll talk about uh, the use of color and light to tell a story. Um, this 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 first class will be pretty lecture heavy. There's not a really a demo uh, for this first class. It's just we're gonna have a lot of uh, concepts introduced um, uh, on how to think about color. It's it's more about thinking about color and and value and light. Uh, this first class, and we'll get into lighting basics next class actually um, and uh, but for the rest of this class you know we'll talk about the role of uh, lighting and value structures in design and and how we can evoke in a certain emotion you'll hear me uh, say that a lot evoke an emotion because that's really that's kind of like I said before it's our job we want we want awesome pictures to look at but we also want to create a feeling um, I mean, at the very least, this, this image that you see in front of you, hopefully it feels cold. <laughs> and if it makes you feel a little cold and, uh, or makes you think of the cold and a little mysterious, you know, awesome. Uh, probably would have been better if I had, you know, some other kind of character in here for a little bit more storytelling, but, you know, it's, it's just a study. Um, so... For the rest of uh, the class, we'll talk about uh, all the value structures, and uh, we'll also cover mood and story markers. Uh, that kind of ties back into the use of color and light to tell a story. Um, and so next class will be lighting basics and the relationship of colors. So that'll be a demo. Um, then we'll move on to materials. Um, I think in addition to, you know, uh, color and light and value structures, materials play a big role in defining your environment um, and, and evoking an emotion. Uh, you know, think of uh, just really simply uh, the desert versus uh, a forest or a rainforest. Uh, the textures are completely different. There's, you know, waxy leaves in the rainforest and just dry sand in the, uh, in the desert and, and rocks and depends, I guess, what kind of desert you're in, but so uh, after materials, uh, we'll move on to color harmonies and kind of how you can arrange colors together so that they're not competing with each other uh, and how colors can work together to create a mood. Um, and we'll also uh, go over creating focal points. Um, <laughs> this image is actually a bad example. There is no real focal point. Uh, if I had a person standing right here, that would probably be the focal point. But focal points are always good in an image, except when you're doing studies and you don't really need them. Um, then we'll move on to a little bit of uh, color theory and just kind of go into colors and the types of emotions they evoke, um, the, the kind of accepted ideas, and kind of how you can use color in context. Um, meaning, you know, a lot of people associate green with bad. Uh, if you think of Lord of the Rings, uh, you know, uh, 
one of the towers is you know super green and a lot of people think green decay death but you can uh, judging how you use other colors in your in your story in your art you can actually make any color feel like a good color or a bad color so we'll cover that um, and uh, then we'll move on to atmosphere and photographic light um, just talking about atmospheric effects and photographic effects um, and kind of how we can trick people looking at our painting to think that it's a photo because sometimes uh, they'll you know you may work for somebody and they'll ask for a final frame so you want to kind of make something that tricks everybody that's looking at it thinking that it's actually a rendered image with lighting and it may not it doesn't necessarily have to be rendered meaning all the tiny little brush strokes and stuff and everything super smooth but just the effect of real photographic light so we'll talk about that and then we'll kind of uh, we'll kind of put it all together and create a rough painting for an image and then after that we'll take that image and refine it so I'll show you uh, some uh, tips and magic tricks for just refining an image and kind of maybe not so much rendering it but making it feel like it's completely done um, yeah so that's kind of in a nutshell that's kind of what we're going to be doing over the next eight weeks um, so yeah so without uh, any further ado let's get started let's get rid of this real quick and let's just start off with the design process uh, you know whether you're making a movie or a video game or animated short um, it usually breaks down into this I mean it might differ across the the different type of storytelling disciplines but uh, more or less it's it's pretty much this so design process and animation uh, what do you start with well you kind of got to start with a story you got to have you know kind of an aligning of, of things that happen you know you you're not just you know uh, very rarely are you playing a video game just to see pretty things you you need a narrative somehow uh, and it's same thing with movies and animation so story a bunch of really super talented people are working on story and, and the intricacies of your characters and the situations that they're in and so they'll work on that for a little while and then once they kind of have you know the ball rolling um, you know, artists step in, uh, other artists, I should say, uh, more, you know, visual development, concept artist people, and they do this stage called, you know, someplace it's called different, but uh, it's a blue sky. And that's just kind of, it's really just, you know, the sky's the limit. You can pretty much do anything you want within reason <laughs> to support the story. Um, and this is where, you know, uh, visual development and story are kind of going back and forth. and you know, art is influencing story and story influencing art. So this is kind of, the story may have started, but now it's, you know, it's taking shape with the addition of art. Um, and so after that, um, you kind of reach a stage called development where the story is basically there. You know, there's, there's room for some things to come in, uh, some ideas, some new ideas. But for the most part, uh, you know, story is pretty nailed out and they're just going to be developing it and you need to develop images to support the story. And so that's, you know, uh, coming up with color scripts, uh, environments, trying to, and here it comes again, evoke an emotion with a certain environment using a certain color palette and value structure. I mean, that's kind of, you know, that's kind of the name of the game um, for, for a lot of viz dev. Uh, and so after development, uh, after all these like paintings and everything's kind of you know figured out in the broad sense uh, then comes packeting and that's anything from uh, like orthographic views of characters to props um, it's really you've gone from really kind of informing story to informing uh, the rest of production uh, modeling look lighting uh, texturing um, so yeah, that's kind of the design process and animation. You know, you could take some stuff out. Uh, again, I mean, it's, I was gonna say, you could take some stuff out depending on where you're working. Uh, you know, it might be slightly different in games or it might be slightly different in live action. 
you know um, so yeah that's basically what we're going to be talking about is um, kind of you know this whole class will basically be the kind of stuff that takes place Oop, not there sorry <laughs> there and there you know blue sky and development it can translate a little into packeting but you know a bulk of color value structure and lighting decisions are made during the blue sky and development stages so that's just a really quick uh, breakdown of uh, design process and uh, I should mention that you know we're, we're talking about light color and value but you know there's other um, pieces to the puzzle of you know successful design and you know it's uh, shapes um, overall design schemes uh, it's just it's it's super intricate and it's why it kind of it takes a bunch of people to to make movies and games and stuff it's yeah <laughs> I, I would say one person couldn't do it but then somebody will just prove me wrong so it's tough so let's get into story um, what what do we need from story? I mean, we're painting pictures. We don't need to worry about story. Well, you wanna you wanna paint pictures that are illustrating the story. So yeah, you kind of need it. So what do you want to do? You want to establish the main story points. Uh, anytime you look at a story, it's usually uh, the. I mean, these are the most interesting points. They're the main points. Uh, any any kind of piece of concept art that you see for a movie, you know, uh, some guy jumping into a volcano or fighting a monster. These are main story points. Uh, and story points kind of address, you know, the emotional, they are the emotional beats and that's what you're gonna wanna learn how to identify. Uh, major emotional beats, uh, you know, uh, we'll go into it a little more. Uh, I'm gonna use Red Riding Hood as an example. And, uh, you know, for, the image that you eventually paint for this class, uh, you know, it's up to you. Whatever your story you want, um, I don't want to, you know, I don't want a whole bunch of people having a whole bunch of red riding hoods and going out and trying to get jobs and basically people competing with a red riding hood in their portfolios. You know, do your own stories, uh, have fun with it. So you're gonna identify, you're gonna learn how to identify what the major emotional beats are, and what else do we want to do. We want to we want to showcase the contrast of one location moment to another. We want to showcase, in other words, the contrast of emotion, um, of design. Um, I mean, it's, you know, uh, I find that it's a lot more pronounced in animation just because everybody has, uh, or uh, animation productions have a lot more control over everything that goes into the movie. I mean, think about it, they have to build everything so uh, live action it's kind of you can direct it to a certain degree but I think the ultimate um, way to kind of harness the contrast is in uh, animation not saying it's better I'm just saying that is the ultimate way to to control it so how do we go about doing this stuff I mean how do we go about finding a ma uh, major emotional beats and how do we go about making contrasts in uh, emotion and you know using the moment and the location so, well, wouldn't be much of a teacher if I didn't address that right now. So, brace yourself because uh, something's going to pop up and it's a lot. But let me just break this down for you. Uh, up here, I have the linear progression of a story. Uh, and we're using Red Riding Hood. Uh, linear meaning, you know, this is step one, step two, step three, step four, and so on. Down here... I got this, you know, this weird mathematical looking curvy thing looks like, I don't know, spaghetti. But the idea behind this is this is these are the emotional beats, the emotional progression during the story. And, and this will make more sense as I'm kind of going through this. So we start the movie with no real, I mean, when you start the movie, you haven't seen anything before or after. So it, it's kind of the emotional blank slate. Um, so we start with Red Riding Hood at home. And so we'll just start off with, that's the median point. That's where everything 
is going to kind of be based off of is, is this beginning point. So Red Riding Hood is super excited to go give Grandma her basket of goodies. So she, uh, you know, her, her emotion is up and we want to reflect that with the audience. Now you don't always have to ref have the, your, your, your image reflecting the character's emotions or the audience, but you have to pick one or the other. You have to have a, an image that says something. So Red starts her journey and you know, most times we want to see that as something positive. Like I said, she's giving grandma her goodies. Maybe she hasn't seen grandma in a while. She's super excited. It's awesome. So she moves into the forest and the next emotional beat would probably be Red meets the wolf. Um, I mean, she's meeting a giant wolf in the forest. That's kind of scary. And we wanna, we wanna show that. We wanna show that the emotion has, has moved from happy and optimistic to kind of a little tentative. I mean, maybe Red is oblivious to it, but we want the audience to feel a little afraid. Um, so using color, light, value structures, we're gonna start shifting that perception, that emotion. And so uh, as the story goes, you know, Red meets the wolf, she says, I'm going to grandma's house, I'm gonna give her cake and stuff. And the wolf says, hey, why don't you, uh, why don't you take a minute and go pick some flowers? So Red Riding Hood goes and picks some flowers, and while she's doing that, the wolf heads off to grandma's. And so the reason I put this as an emotional beat is, you know, the wolf is the enemy. He's, he's the villain of the movie, and so he's going to grandma's house, so the villain is going to some sweet little old lady's house. Well, that's, that's even a little more dangerous, you know? So, what happens next? Well, Wolf eats grandma. I mean, that's, that's pretty bad, you know? Most people like their grandmas. <laughs> most people don't wanna see them eaten by, by wolves. And so, we have like this, you know, this pretty low point. And, and if you look back, at, as, you know, during the duration up, up until this point, this is the lowest point. Um, I mean, yeah, grandma getting eaten by a wolf we have a low point, and what we're gonna do now is we're gonna contrast it because red arrives. And so we have this, just this huge difference in emotion right here. And this would be prime to kind of show as an illustration. And, and why is this positive? Well, red arrives at grandma's house and she's oblivious to the wolf. Now the audience could be, you know, biting their nails or whatever, freaking out and saying, you know, don't go in there, don't go in there, but Red is super excited. So we, we kind of have this, this high point and we're, we're gonna contrast it again with a low point. I mean, what happens after Red goes in? You know, there's that little spiel about what well, big eyes, you have grandma, and after that, the wolf eats her. And so we've just killed the main character. That is a low point. I mean, we like Red, we're supposed to like Red. So her dying is kind of a bad thing. But what happens, uh, a hunter shows up in the middle of the woods and he ends up cutting open the wolf and freeing grandma and Red Riding Hood who have miraculously survived. So that is, I mean, you're just eaten by a wolf and then you're let free and you're alive and it's awesome. So that's the best thing that could have happened. It's great. So if you look back at these, these emotional beats, you know, you really do have some, some big jumps happening. You know, we have something here. This is kind of, you know, every day. Okay, meat and cereal. This is, hey, I'm pretty excited. I'm going somewhere. And then, you know, things are getting a little scary. Pretty bad. Then they're, they're almost good for a second. Then they're bad again. And then they're great. And so what we as visual development concept artists, um, we want to, delineate each of these moments and make them feel as separate from one another as possible.